What's up everybody? Mel here again with Sunrise Compass. Migrations are such an important topic that I wanted to bring in one of our most senior tech arcs to tell us about it. Mr. Ryan Bottoms. What's up? Thank you for having me. Um, I bring about nine years experience in data migrations and I think I have something to tell you guys. Let's start at the beginning. How do you go get the data and prep it to bring it into D365? So the most important part of this process, the Sunrise process, is that we, the tech arcs, own this and then we go get the data. Prefer, the preferred option is to get it into SQL as it is trackable and manageable. You want to think of data migration as a pipeline. You're extracting data from the customer, you're transforming it, some process, and then you're loading it. As long as the ETO pipeline is flowing, you'll be in business. All right, so you've got your data into a SQL database. What do you do next? Transform it. And all these transformations or the process in order to do so needs to be automated. And some options are SQL scripts, you can do it in C Sharp, or you know, everyone's favorite language, X++. Okay, so let's say that all that's good to go, right? What are some tips you need to keep in mind when you're importing the data? Okay, so when you're importing the data, there are two main strategies that I like to use. So you wanna leverage the out-of-the-box entities. When I say leverage, I mean you wanna duplicate them and then do any custom logic or deletions, additions to them as needed. And then the other option is to create your own custom entities yourself. But in, in case of either one, you wanna to try to use set-based. It's a little bit faster um, if you can. If not, just you know, row by row is acceptable. And you wanna think of data migration as a pipeline. You're extracting data from the customer, you're transforming it, some process, and then you're loading it into D365. So why is that so key, the automated versus manual? So automated is, an, is really important because at GoLive, when things are hectic and you really haven't been sleeping and everyone's running around Facts. and they are frantic, you want a computer to be executing this in an automated way so there are no mistakes. And the key is when a lot things are fast moving, a lot of manual steps get forgotten, and if there are important manual steps, then you could have a disaster on your hand. But that's what these sprints are for, to build that process in order to get to a point where at Go Live, you should be just like pressing a button or executing some programs in a terminal, and then things should just be running. You know, if you're importing sales orders or purchase orders or you know, financial trial balances, and you miss something that's critical, and they don't catch it until you know a week, two weeks, three, three weeks later, that's when you really are in trouble. Mm, so to help with that, you not only have to get the data in, you also mm. have to validate it, mm. right? So what are some tips you have for data validation? First and foremost, you want to get this data validation in front of the customer as soon as possible, making them a part of that process and letting them understand what needs to be done in order to make sure this is correct is extremely important, and the earlier the better. Making sure that they are in the system as soon as you're loading data, they see it, they understand what it's supposed to look like, and they also understand how to compare it versus their legacy system. On our side, we should be doing uh, checking and validation on the record counts, the sums, these amounts, and we do kind of any manual checking as well, but I prefer to do things in an automated way. When I mean that, I mean you should be having some sort of program to check, hey, are the number of records in the legacy system matching the number of records in Dynamics 365. For example, if there's a thousand products in our legacy system, is there a thousand products in 65? And the same thing goes for transactions. If you have you know, 10 million units in the sales orders, there needs to be 10 million units in 65 after it's loaded. Who actually owns data validation? We do. However, it is our job to guide the customer through this process. Ultimately, they have to sign off on it, but we're the ones that have to educate them on how to validate, what to validate, and what is the process for making sure that everything is correct. That's right, because it's their system that we're helping them implement, but it's their data. Yes, Yeah. but we are the ones that own the process of teaching them. There you go. So Ryan, with your nine years of experience doing this, what's the number one pitfall you see for people who are new to data migrations? So I've seen it in the form of speed. When I mean speed, I mean speed in the uh, fact of getting fast feedback and being able to execute the migrations quickly. You know, if a migration takes four hours, I'm willing to bet we can get it down to two. All right, so now y'all know the Sunrise philosophy behind data migrations. The next episode, we are going to cover the Microsoft tooling to get that job done with Mr. Ryan here. <laughs> My favorite. All right, catch y'all next time on Sunrise Compass. See you later.